Hey guys, Hayden here again from Alarm System Store, and today we're going to be talking about a couple different tests that you can run on the DSC Neo system. Um, what I have here is just a RF keypad, I got a PG9303 door contact, and then a PG9984 uh, wireless motion. And basically what I'm going to run you through is how to perform the walk test for your system, which just makes sure that your sensors are communicating their open and closes properly. And then I'm also going to show the wireless placement test, which is used to check wireless signal strength for these PowerG devices. And now, if you have any questions about um, any of this equipment, or if you're just interested in the DSC Neo, you're welcome to go check out our website at alarmsystemstore.com. Um, we have all the Neo accessories as well as all the PowerG devices that are offered with it there. Um, so you can check it out and see if it's a system that you would be interested in. Um, to start, uh, basically I'm just gonna move the camera over here and we're gonna take a look at how to enter the uh, walk test and the wireless placement test sections of programming. And then I'll show you what it looks like when we get results from them. Uh, this is gonna be a fairly quick video, but hopefully it will show you guys out there that are um, installing your system a good way to test your different sensors. So I'll be right back. All right, so we're set up and ready to go. So now uh, we're just gonna go into programming and check out those tests. Um, if you'll notice, I do have a trouble condition that is for the battery that is in this motion. It is low, uh, that would have been handy during my low battery tutorial that I did not too long ago, but it is what it is. So uh, what we're gonna do is just go into programming. So star eight, and then your installer code. Default is five, 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 five. And I pressed one too many fives. Uh, so now once we're in programming, um, you can do this while you're you know enrolling sensors or whatever the case is. At any time you can come into programming and do these tests. Um, but we're gonna do the wireless placement test first. And that is because these are wireless devices. Um, and to get to the wireless placement test, what we're going to do is just type in 904. It's going to bring up a subsection where you can select any of the uh, zones that you have on your system. So you will need to know what zone your sensors are tied to. Um, right now I have the door contact on zone 9, and then I have the motion on zone 10. So we're going to scroll over to zone 9. Hit star. And it's going to pop up and say testing zone nine. Now with it being so close to the panel, hopefully I do get a good signal, but basically you just wanna trigger the device. After it's triggered, it sends a signal to the receiver and the receiver will report how strong that signal is. So here you can see right now our signal is strong. Now under the 24 hour section, it does say not test. And basically what that means is it hasn't been able to test the 24 hour average because I just enrolled these sensors just a little while ago. So if for some reason you see not test under the now, um, you can just back out and go back into that zone and then re-trigger the sensor and it will provide you with that signal strength. Now the signal strength options are strong, which is what we have here. Uh, there is good and then there is weak. And if you have a weak signal strength, it should still be okay. But if there is any way you can improve the signal by removing anything metal around the detector or placing it somewhere that is a little bit more uh, closer to the panel or the receiver, um, that will help obviously. But as long as you are getting a signal to it, PowerG is pretty good so it should be pretty strong. Now, I don't have a, a good way to show those other two options because um, PowerG does have ridiculous range, so I'd probably have to go outside and walk a couple hundred feet before I could get one of the weaker signal strengths. But generally for indoor applications, for residential applications, you will always get a strong signal unless there is something uh, like metal interfering with the signal between the detector and the receiver. So now that we've tested that one, we can go back by hitting pound, scroll over to zone 10, and then we can test zone 10. Now hopefully this motion has enough battery for me to run these tests. Um, okay, so it tested it there. 
Uh, took a second because it is trying to die on me, but we got a strong signal from that one as well. And of course it gives you the not test for the 24 hour. Um, if you do wanna come back and check the 24 hour after a day or so after you've installed your panel, that is a good idea. Um, that will tell you the average of the different signals that it's received over that 24 hour period. So uh, now that we've tested both of those for wireless signal, um, we're going to go into the walk test. So we're just gonna go back until we get our red lock, select 904 placement test, and then the walk test is under section 901. So you can just type it in or you can scroll to it and hit star. So whenever you get into the walk test, what you're going to see is that the LEDs on the right side of the screen are gonna all start flashing. Um, the middle of the screen's also going to start going through um, pretty much everything that you can see on it. Now, personally, I do not recommend walk testing as like a final test for your system. It is a good test to make sure that your sensors are you know, in their new locations, especially wireless ones, are reporting to the panel properly. But there's a few little caveats to the walk test that I don't particularly care for. So anytime you're doing a final test after you've installed your system, I always recommend actually arming the panel and triggering each sensor independently. Essentially, now that we're in walk test mode, what we can do is trigger the sensors and it's going to beep at the keypad to let us know that it made that good connection. So. Uh, one thing to remember, uh, most people will have this option on by default unless you manually change it, but there is a system option for keypad buzzer that you can disable. If that is disabled, you won't hear anything whenever you're doing the walk test. Now that keypad buzzer does have other features like buzzing whenever um, the system's an alarm or whenever the entry delay is active. So I don't ever recommend turning that off, but I've talked to some people that did have it off and we're trying to walk test and they can't make the walk test work because that keypad buzzer does have to be active. So anyway, um, now all we gotta do, trigger the sensor. So you heard immediately as soon as I opened that door contact, the buzzer went off. So you can do it again, test it as many times as you want, um, and then we're going to do the motion as well. So the motion can be a little bit trickier, especially wireless motions. So I did get it to go off there, but one thing to keep in mind with wireless motions is that they all do have a sleep mode. So this is to preserve battery life, um, as well as just keep the sensor from constantly picking up motion as people are walking around the house. But this sleep mode does not get deactivated when you go into walk test mode. That is another reason that I always recommend doing a full alarm test because that actually triggers the motions to wake up and then they will be active for that arming period. The walk test doesn't send that signal out so when you're in walk test mode, if your motion is in that sleep mode, it's not going to trigger during the walk test. So. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, you can do this with any type of sensor. Um, burglary sensors are obviously the most common to do this with once you've enrolled them, just to make sure they're all working. Um, smokes and life-saving devices like that, I do recommend testing with the recommended methods, such as uh, canned smoke for uh, smoke alarms, or canned CO for CO alarms, etc. Uh, whatever the case may be. But essentially for most easy, easily triggerable sensors like this, um, the walk test and that wireless placement test are good options for just ensuring things are set up the way you want them. So now again, I know I've hit on this a lot, but essentially once you've done these tests, I would not consider your job done. Anytime you've finalized setting up an alarm system, always put it through its paces by checking the actual arm status and alarm status of the panel. So once you've finalized your walk test and your wireless placement test and you have everything set up and you think you're good to go, that is when I would recommend arming the panel and going and setting off alarms for any sensors that uh, may be in question, or if you're thorough, go through and trigger every sensor, and that way you know that every sensor is reporting during an alarm. 
So um, hopefully that was informative. This is just a quick example of how to use the tests for this system. Um, if you have any other questions or any troubles with it, um, you're always free to reach out to us at alarmsystemstore.com. And if you have any questions on products or you're looking to get a system, just reach out to us. We'll help you design something and set it up the way that you want it set up. So that's it for the walk test and the wireless placement test. Um, just quick examples on how to use them so that you can be successful when you're installing your system. Um, if you're on YouTube, if you don't mind, leave a like and subscribe. And if you have a comment, by all means, leave it down there. Uh, we try to respond to as many as we can. Now, if you happen to be on our website, alarmsystemstore.com, looking at our how-to videos, hopefully you're finding what you need. But if there is anything you don't see, you're welcome to check our YouTube channel. It's just Alarm System Store on YouTube. And you can see if a video exists for what you're looking into. So otherwise, I will catch you guys on the next one.